Hello everyone, we're at the University of New South Wales and I'm Norman Wahlberger. This is our second problem in this linear algebra series of online tutorial solutions to Math 1131 problems. We're looking at question five in chapter one, which is one of the harder problems and it's more theoretical and also perhaps a little bit more interesting. It's actually, in fact, a classical theorem called Varignon's theorem that goes back to Pierre Varignon, 1731. And here's what he proved. That given a convex quadrilateral A, B, C, D, so here it is right here, prove using vectors that the quadrilateral formed by joining the midpoints of A, B, B, C, C, D, and D, A, in other words, this quadrilateral right here formed from the points E, F, G and H, that that is always a parallelogram, which I remind you means that the opposite sides are always parallel. So these two sides are parallel and these two sides are parallel. No matter which kind of convex quadrilateral ABCD we start with. Okay, we want to give a proof using just basic arithmetic with vectors. So how do we do it? Well, well, let's start by introducing some vectors. And since we have a quadrilateral around, there are naturally four vectors that we can rely on. The vectors form from the th four sides of this quadrilateral. So let's introduce them. So let's let, let's let, say, uh, A be the vector a, B, so it's this vector right here. Maybe I'll draw it uh, adjacent here. So there's the vector A, all right? So that's the first one. And then we're going to introduce B, which is the vector from B to C. And then C, which is the vector from C to D. And D, which is the vector from D to A. All right, so we've got A here. This one here is uh, going to be B. This one here is C. And this one here is D. And I remind you that if we translate a vector, it's still the same vector. So the fact that I'm moving this one off a little bit, it's still the same vector. Okay, so what do we know? Well, uh, first of all, let's observe. That if we add up all of these four vectors, we get back to where we started. So that A plus B plus C plus D is the zero vector. Say, if you start here, and then you go in this direction, 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 well, you're back where you started. So the cumulative vector is zero. Okay, so that's a relation between A, B, C, and D. These four vectors are not independent. All right, now let's try to have a look at this smaller quadrilateral formed by the midpoints. And uh, let's get a control on that. So. Let's have a look at EF. The vector EF, how can we express that in terms of A, B, C, and D? Well, EF is EB plus BF. Right. To go from E to F, we go first from E to B, and then from B to F. Okay, but the vector EB is just one half of A because we're assuming E is a midpoint of this side. So this is one half of A. And the vector BF from here to here is one half of the vector B because F is a midpoint of BC. One half of B. And similarly, let's have a look at the vector 
HG. Going from H to G is HD plus DG. Now before I calculate this, why am I looking at this vector and this vector? Well, it's because I want to show this as a parallelogram. So what I want to do is I want to show that these are in fact the same vectors. If I can show they're the same vectors, then that means that they're equal both in terms of direction and in terms of magnitude. In particular, that'll mean that these two sides are parallel. Okay, so what is HG? It's HD plus DG. How about HD? How do we express that in terms of the vectors? Well, it's half of D, but in the negative direction. So HD is minus one half of D. And what is DG, this vector here? Well, it's half of the vector C, but in the negative direction. And so now can we see why is it true that EF equals HG? Well, so then EF equals HG since one half of A plus B equals minus one half of D plus C. This follows from this equation, uh, maybe we'll call it one up here, that's giving us the relationship between A, B, and C, D. Right? So A plus B plus C plus D equals zero. That's the same as saying that A plus B is the same as minus C plus D. And if we multiply by a half, it doesn't change anything. And that's then, uh, we conclude that, that the line EF is parallel to the line uh, GH. And similarly, uh, EH is parallel to FG. In fact, we don't actually even need this second part. Once we've established that these two sides are equal as vectors, then this is automatically a parallelogram because then, then it follows that these other two sides are also equal um, as vectors. All right, so that's the end of the proof of Varignon's theorem using uh, vectors. Now, uh, perhaps a small note. The original statement said that we have a convex quadrilateral. What would happen if we didn't have a convex quadrilateral? So f suppose for the sake of argument that we had a situation where we have a quadrilateral that looks perhaps like this. Okay, so where we have four points, A, B, C, and D. then what would the midpoints look like? Well, there would be E, F, G, and H. And maybe this is a little bit too narrow, but let's have a look. So this is what I would be calling E, and that's F, G, and H. So if we join those up, E, F, F, G, G, H, and HE, we see that in fact, it looks at least plausible in this case, and you can try it out uh, yourself, that we're still getting a parallelogram for those midpoints. And in fact, the algebra of vectors that we've used here does not rely at any point on the convexity. So in fact, this convex condition is actually unnecessary for the statement and the proof of this result.